Hi dear friends, we have already learned what is moment of inertia. Let us recall that the moment of inertia of a body about an axis of rotation is the sum of the products of its masses of its constituent points and the squares of their respective distance from the axis of rotation. We have already learned this. If you are considering this system and let I Z be the axis passing through this system perpendicular to the plane and if you want to find out the moment of inertia we have to consider all the point masses in the system. In this system we have we will consider m1 point masses m1 point mass m2 and so on point mass mn. Next step we have to find out the distance from the uh, axis of rotation to these point masses. So we will get R1, R2 and so on Rn. Next step we have to multiply this M into M1 into R1 square. And we have to add all this moment of inertia, point masses moment of inertia and together we will get I. That is summation of MR square is the moment of inertia. Let us consider another system. Same system and uh, we already find out the moment of inertia and I is a distance axis passing through its center and this axis is perpendicular to this plane, perpendicular to the plane of this system. If you want to find out the moment of inertia of this system based on another axis. If we are going to find out the moment of inertia of the system based on this axis, surely we know the moment of inertia will change. So what we have to do here, again we have to consider each point masses in the system. Then the distance between this, these point masses and this axis, then we have to multiply, we have to find out m1, m1 r1 square, m2 r2 square and so on. Then we have to do the summation. This is a long procedure, we know that. We don't want to repeat this whole procedure whenever we are changing this axis of rotation. What we have to do to avoid this uh, lengthy procedure? This parallel axis theorem helps us to find out the moment of inertia whenever we consider another um, uh, axis rather than the central axis. What this parallel axis theorem says? The parallel axis theorem states that the moment of inertia of a rigid body about any axis is equal to the sum of the sum of its moment of inertia about a parallel axis passing through its center of mass and the product of the mass of the body and the square of the distance between two axes. So mathematically we can represent moment of inertia of a rigid body about any axis equal to I C M plus M square. We can illustrate this, consider this point, consider this system, this rigid body and Z is a dash is the central axis passing through its center, center of gravity and we know the moment of inertia is I, uh, I equal to m square that we denoted as ICM. Here we are considering another axis A, B. And this is not passing through the center of gravity. And this A, B and Z is a dash situated at a distance A. Here we consider a point mass M at a distance A, at a distance Y from the central axis Z is a dash. And it is situated at the point P, at the point P. So here the moment of inertia the moment of inertia of the point mass about AB will be equal to M into R square. We know uh, moment of inertia is equal to M R square. That is mass into the square of the distance. Here the square of the distance is this point mass is at a distance Y plus A. The total distance is A plus Y. So we will get M into Y plus A whole square. If you are considering whole system, whole point masses, what will be the moment of inertia? 
the moment of inertia of the whole body about AB, the axis AB will be equal to summation of summation over M y into y plus A all square. We can remove this bracket, we can expand this, then we will get summation of M y square, M into y square plus summation of M into A square plus 2 M A y. Here summation is there. Summation of 2 into M A y. Here, M, summation of M y square equal to I C M. Center of uh, moment of inertia of the body passing through the center of gravity. And M A square. If you are taking all the point masses and some we, we are getting, we are uh, taking the summation, then we will get M A square. Summation of 2 M A Y equal to, we can take, this is a constant, so we can take it out 2 A and the summation of M into Y, which is the sum of the moment of all the mass points about an axis passing through the center of mass, which are to give the sum as 0. Substituting this result in the above equation, in the above equation we will get, some, substitute this whole in the above equation, we will get I equal to I Z M into M A square. So, parallel axis theorem give us a new way to find out the moment of inertia based on any axis. To find out the moment of inertia of the system based, of any, based on any axis, what we should know? We should know two things, whole mass of the body that is M, we should know that. Secondly, we have to know the moment of inertia of the body passing through its center, uh, center of gravity, ICM, we should know that. So, if we know two things, ICM and EM, we can find out the moment of inertia of the body passing through any axis. Now, we are moving to the perpendicular axis theorem. The perpendicular axis theorem states that the moment of inertia of a plane lamina about an axis perpendicular to its plane is equal to the sum of its moment of inertia about two mutually perpendicular axes lying in the plane of the lamina intersecting each other where the perpendicular axis meet the plane. We can illustrate this, consider this plane uh, in this rigid body. Z is a dash is axis passing through its center and it is perpendicular to the plane of the lamina. This is a plane, so this Z is a dash is passing perpendicular to it. And let I Z be the moment of inertia based on this um, central axis Z Z dash. And there are two other axes, it's X X dash and Y Y dash. This X X dash and Y Y dash uh, are perpendicular to each other and they are in the plane. Not perpendicular to the plane, but in the plane, this two are. So, I, X and I, Y are the moment of inertia of these two planes. Z is a dash, X, X dash and Y, Y dash. If you are considering a point mass M, this point mass M is at a distance P from this center, uh, center O. So, if you are considering the moment of inertia of this point mass M, about is a Z dash, that is the central axis passing through its center and perpendicular to the plane. If you are considering the moment of inertia, we will get M into OP square. OP square is the distance between the central axis and the point mass. If you are considering the axis uh, coordinate of this point mass M, we will get uh, I is equal to M into X square plus Y square. If you are considering all the point masses, all the system, we will get the moment of inertia about Z is a dash equal to M into X summation over M into X square plus Y square. If you are removing the bracket, we will get summation over MX square plus summation over MY square. Here we already know that the moment of inertia passing through um, based on this axis y y dash is equal to i y and x x dash is equal to i x i x we already said that so we can substitute this then we will get i x and i y
So, the moment of inertia, the as the perpendicular axis is this, the moment of inertia I is equal to I x and I y. Here we have to notice one thing. This I is it is perpendicular to the plane of the ramina. This is perpendicular. And I x and I y, they are parallel to the plane. These two axes are parallel to the plane. And they are, this I x and I y are perpendicular to each other. So, these two things we have to notice. This is the perpendicular axis theorem. Hi dear friends, yesterday we have learned what is parallel axis theorem and, is, and what is perpendicular axis theorem. Today we are going to uh, use this parallel axis theorem and perpendicular axis theorem to find out the moment of inertia of certain bodies having regular shape like tin trod, circular ring, annular disc, uh, sphere, sir, uh, cylinder, etc. About different axes. To find out the moment of inertia, we have to adopt a procedure with the two steps. First step is, we have to obtain an expression for the moment of inertia of an element of the body about the given axis. The second step is, we have to integrate uh, over the approximated limit, limit to cover the entire body. Now, using these two steps, we are going to find out the moment of inertia of a thin trot. We already drawn a thin trot here. The total length of the road is L. An axis Z is a dash is passing through this thin trot that is perpendicular to its plane and passing through its center O. What will be the mass per unit length of this road? That will be equal to M by L. M is the total mass of this thin road and L is the total length. So, when we divide the, this total mass with this total length, we will get mass per unit length of this road. Let us denote as small m. Consider a small element dy in this road. This dy is at a distance y from this central axis O. Central axis is a, is a dash. What will be the moment of inertia of this element about Z is a dash? We already learned moment of inertia. To find out the uh, moment of inertia, we have to multiply this mass with square of the distance. Mass of this small element is m dy. And the distance between this small element and the central axis Z is a dash is y. So we have to multiply m dy with square of the distance that is y square. So we find out the moment of inertia of the small element. What we have to find, what we have to do to find out the moment of inertia of the whole thin rod, we have to integrate this m dy into y square with the limit minus l by 2 to plus l by 2. Now we are going to integrate m y square dy with the limit minus l by 2 to plus l by 2. Here m is a constant to, so we can take this m out of this in, uh, limit. When we are integrating y square we will, y square dy we will get y cube divided by 3 within the limit minus l by 2 to plus l by 2. When we are applying this limit we can take this 3 outside so m by 3 into l by 2 to the cube minus minus l by 2 to the cube. So it will we will get m by 3 into l cube by 8 plus l cube by 8. This minus and minus become plus. So here we will get it's a plus sign. When we are adding this we will get 2 ml cube by 24 that is equal to ml cube by 12 because this 2 and 12 will cancel and we will get 1 by 2. Here this m is, m stands for the uh, mass per unit length that is equal to capital M by small l. So we have to re-substitute this small m with capital M by l. So we will get m by l into l cube by 12. This l and uh, uh, one L will cancel each other. So, we will get capital M L square divided by 12. So, the moment of inertia equal to M L square by 12. 
when the axis is passing through its center and perpendicular to its plane. Now we are going to find out the moment of inertia about an axis passing through one end and perpendicular to its length. Consider the figure drawn. drawn. Let I dash denote the moment of inertia of the road about an axis passing through one end and perpendicular to its length. Since the axis is passing through one end which is parallel to this Z, Z dash that is the central axis passing through, through its center of gravity we can use the parallel axis theorem here. So according to the parallel axis theorem the moment of inertia of this thin road based on this new axis will be equal to I dash equal to ICM plus MA square. Here ICM is equal to ML square by 12 that is the moment of inertia of this thin rod based on the axis which is passing through its center of gravity. That we already find out that m l square by 12. A is the distance between this axis and this the central axis. That is already given us A, L by 2. That is given us L by 2. So we can substitute this A with L by 2. Substituting these two result in this above equation we will get ml square by 12 plus m into l by 2 whole square. By cancelling the same thing and adding together we will get ml square by 3. This is the moment of inertia about an axis that is passing through one end but that is perpendicular to its length. So we find out the moment of inertia of this thin road based on the central axis and the axis passing through one end and perpendicular to its length. Wish you a good time to all. In this class we are going to uh, find out the moment of inertia of a circular ring. Consider this ring. The mass of the ring, let the mass of the ring be capital M and radius of the ring is capital R. Now we are going to find out the moment of inertia about an axis passing through its center and perpendicular to its plane. If it is the plane, the uh, axis is passing through its center and this axis is perpendicular to this plane. Let z dash z is a dash be that axis. Consider a small element m. This small element is at the distance r from the center O because the radius of the ring is capital R. So the moment of inertia of the element m about the axis z z dash will be equal to m r square because the equation to find out the moment of inertia is m r square. Since all such element of the ring are at the same distance capital R from the z z dash axis, the moment of inertia of the ring about the axis z z dash will be equal to summation over m r square. So we will get the moment of inertia as capital M r square. Next, let us try to find out the moment of inertia about a diameter. Consider this ring. In this ring, let us try, let us consider two diameters x x dash and y y dash. Let i x be the moment of inertia of x x dash and i y be the moment of inertia of y y dash. It is clear that this moment of these two moment of inertia based on the two diameters will be equal. So we can say i x equal to i y equal to i d. By applying the perpendicular axis theorem we will get i z equal to i x plus i y. Since i x equal to i y and we are uh, equating this to i d we can say that i x plus i y equal to 2 i d. We already learned that the moment of inertia uh, about an axis passing through its center is equal to m r square that is i z equal to m r square. So i d will be m r square by 2. This is the moment of inertia about a diameter. Hi dear friends. Today let us learn the moment of inertia of an annular disc. Consider the figure drawn. This is, consider this is a disc. And the mass of this disc is capital M. 
the inner radii is r2 and the outer radii is r1 let us determine the moment of inertia of the disc about an axis passing through the center and perpendicular it to its plane in this z is a dash is the axis passing through its center and perpendicular to the plane of this disc the mass per unit area of the disc sigma equal to capital m divided by pi r2 square minus r1 square here capital m is the mass of this disc and this is the area of the disc let us imagine that this disc is made up of a large number of concentric rings one such ring is i marked here as red the radius is small r and the thickness of this ring is dr the area of the ring equal to 2 pi r dr and the mass of the disc is 2 pi r dr into sigma because the mass per unit area of the disc is sigma the moment of inertia of this ring will be equal to m r square we already learned that the moment of inertia of a thin ring will be equal to m r square so here m stands for 2 pi r sigma dr and we have to multiply with the square of the distance distance is r square r distance is r this is the distance so we have to multiply with the square of the distance so we will get 2 pi r cube sigma dr so what will be the moment of inertia of the annular disk about z is a dash we already find the moment of inertia of a thin ring in this disk so to find out the moment of inertia of the whole disk we have to integrate from r1 to r2 with the moment of inertia of the thin ring so we will get integration over the limit r1 to r2 2 pi r cube sigma dr which will be equal to 2 pi sigma here 2 pi sigma is a constant factor so we can take it out of the limit and when we integrate this r cube we will get r to the power 4 divided by 4 and we have to apply the limit r1 to r2 then we will get 2 pi sigma r2 to the power 4 minus r1 to the power 4 divided by 4 sigma is the mass per unit area of the disk so we have to replace this sigma with its value then we will get 2 pi m divided by pi r2 square minus r1 square into r2 to the power 4 minus r1 to the power 4 divided by 4 this r2 to the power 4 minus r1 minus r1 to the power 4 is in the form of a square minus b square that is equal to a plus b into a minus b so we can factorize this as R two square plus R one square into R two square minus R one square. So we will get um, m into R two square plus R one square into R two square minus R one square divided by two into R two square minus R one square. When we cancel the similar terms, we will get moment of inertia I is that equal to m into R one square plus R two square divided by two. now we are going to see the moment of inertia about a diameter consider this figure in this figure let us consider two diameters x x dash and y y dash the moment of inertia of x x dash b i x and y y dash b i y the moment of inertia of two diameters will be equal so we can say i x equal to i y which is equal to i d we are equating this with i d now applying the perpendicular axis theorem we will get i is it equal to ix plus iy here we already equated ix equal to iy with id so we can replace this ix plus iy equal to to id then we, we will get id equal to i z by 2 we already learned what is i z that is equal to m divided m into r2 square plus r1 square by 2 so we will get i d as m into r2 square minus r2 square plus r2 so we will get i z i d so we will get i d is equal to m into r1 square plus r2 square divided by 4 hi dear friends 
Today let us learn about the moment of inertia of a thin circular disc. Consider this disc. This is a thin uniform circular disc. Its mass is capital M and radius is R. So the mass per unit area of the disc sigma will be equal to total mass divided by total area that is equal to capital M divided by pi r square. Now let us find the moment of inertia about an axis passing through its center of perpendicular to its plane. Let us imagine that this disc is made up of a large number of concentric spin rings. One such ring is this one with radius r and thickness dr. So the area of the ring will be 2 pi r dr. How it comes? Consider this figure. In this figure, from here to here, the radius is r plus dr. From here to here, the radius is r. To find out the area of this thin ring with the thickness dr, we have to subtract the disc with radius r from the area of the disc with the radius r plus dr. So we will get pi into r plus dr square minus pi r square. After removing this bracket we will get pi r square plus pi dr square plus 2 pi r dr minus pi r square. In this, this pi r square and this pi r square will get cancelled. And here the, this pi dr square, this dr is very small. So when we will square this, the, this will become very small. So we can avoid this, we can cancel this. So we will get the area as 2 pi r dr. So the mass of the ring will be 2 pi r dr into sigma. Moment of inertia of the ring about z is a dash axis equal to 2 pi r dr sigma into r square. This comes from the equation of the ring, uh, moment of inertia of the ring equal to m r square. So the moment of inertia of the disc about z is a dash axis. We will get it by integrating uh, the moment of inertia of the ring from 0 to r. So integration over the limit 0 to r 2 pi sigma r cube dr. Here 2 pi sigma is a constant so we can take it outside the integration. When we integrate r cube dr we will get r to the power 4 divided by 4 within the limit 0 to r. Here sigma is the mass per unit area of the disc. When we substitute this value we will get 2 pi into m by pi r square into r to the power 4 divided by 4. After cancelling the similar term we will get moment of inertia about an axis passing through its center and perpendicular to its plane equal to capital M r square divided by 2. Hi dear friends, today let us learn about the moment of inertia of a solid cylinder. Consider a cylinder like this. The mass of this cylinder is capital M and its length is L. So the mass per unit length will be equal to M by M. Imagine that this cylinder is made up of a large number of thin discs placed one over another. Consider one such ring like this. The mass of this thin ring is small n and its length is, its radius is r. So the moment of inertia of the disc about the axis of cylindrical symmetry equal to m r square by 2. We already learned the moment of inertia of the thin, thin disc that is equal to m r square by 2. So the moment of inertia of the whole cylinder will be equal to summation over m into r square by 2. Here r square is r square by 2 is uh, constant so we can take it outside of the summation. So i will be equal to r square by 2 summation of m which will be equal to capital m r square by 2. Next we are going to find out the moment of inertia of the, of the solid cylinder based on the axis which is passing through the center of mass and perpendicular to its length. This is the solid cylinder with the length L and the mass capital M. Z is a dash is the axis passing through its center and this is a thin disc with the thickness dy situated as a at a distance small y. Mass per unit length of this uh, cylinder will be equal to 
m by l so the mass of the disc with the thickness dy will be equal to m by l into dy we know that the mass a moment of inertia of the of the disc about any diameter will be equal to m r square by 4 so applying this in the in this diagram we will get the moment of inertia of the disc about any diameter will be equal to m by l into d by into r square by 4 now here we are going to apply the parallel axis theorem so the moment of inertia of the disc about z is a dash axis will be equal to m by l dy into r square by 4 plus m by l dy into y square you may be remember the parallel axis theorem according to parallel axis theorem i z will be equal to i c m plus m y square here i z equal to i c m plus m y square where i c m is the moment of inertia of the central mass and m stands for the mass of the cylinder and y is the distance between the two axes to find out the moment of inertia of the whole cylinder let us apply the integration so we will get i equal to the limit minus l by t2 plus l by 2 m by l r square by 2 into d by plus limit over minus l by t2 plus l by 2 into m by l y square d by here 2 here m is constant and l is constant we take it outside the limit and we can change this in limit uh, from minus l by 2 to l by 2 to 0 to l by 2 by multiplying with 2. So, we will get 2 m by l into limit over 0 to l by 2 into r square by 4 dy plus y square into dy. After the integration, we will get here only dy is the uh, variable. So, we will get y after integration. When we integrate y square, we will get y cube by 3. Applying this limit, we will get, here applying this limit, we will get 2m by l into r square by l by 8 plus l cube by 24. By cancelling similar terms here and take m alone outside and taking l inside the bracket and cancelling the similar term, we will get m into r square by 4 plus l square by 12. This is the moment of inertia of the solid cylinder when the axis is passing through the center of mass and perpendicular to its center. Hi dear friends, today let us learn about the moment of inertia of a solid sphere. Consider a sphere like this. Let the mass of this sphere is capital M and radius B R capital R. So the density of the sphere will be equal to rho equal to total mass divided by its volume that is 4 by 3 pi r cube. Now let us find out the moment of inertia about a diameter. Consider y y dash axis. Based on this axis we are going to find out the moment of inertia. Imagine that this Sphere is made up of a large number of thin disc with the thickness dy. One such disc is AB. Its thickness is dy and situated at a distance y from the center of O. From the figure, the radius of this disc AB will be equal to root of R square minus y square. Here R is the radius, y is the distance from the center O. So, this radius of this disc will be equal to uh, root of r square minus y square that we can find out using the Pythagoras theorem. Now the volume of the disc that will be equal to pi into r square minus y square into d by. We know that the volume will be equal to uh, area into thickness. This is the area and this is the thickness. Now the mass of the disc. There is an equation mass by volume equal to rho. So, mass of the disc will be equal to volume into rho, that is density. So, we will get pi into r square minus y square into d by into rho. Rho is the density. This is the volume of the disc. We know that the moment of inertia of the disc will be equal to m r square by 2. 
so the moment of inertia of this disc ab about y by y dash will be equal to pi into r square minus y square d by into two into r square minus y square divided by two. This stands for the mass of this uh, mass, and this is the square of the distance divided by two. In this equation, r square minus y square whole square. This is in the form of a minus b whole square. We know that a minus b whole square equal to a square minus two ab plus b square. So we can rewrite this equation as pi rho into r to the power four into minus two into r square y square plus y to the power four divided by two into dy. This is the moment of inertia of the disc. Now we have to find out the moment of inertia of the sphere. To find out the moment of inertia of the sphere, we have to integrate the value of the moment of inertia of the disc um, within the three limits minus r to plus r. Here r is the radius of the sphere. So we will get the moment of inertia of the sphere equal to one by two minus integration over the limit minus r to r pi rho into r to the power four minus two r square y square. Plus y to the power four into dy. We can change this even limit into odd limit by multiplying with it two. So we will get one by two into two into pi rho uh, limit integration or limit zero to r r to the power four minus two r square y square plus y to the power four into dy. In this integration, in the first term. First term, there is no changing variable, only dy is there. So when we integrate dy, we will get pi, and here y square is there. When we integrate, we will get pi cube by three, and when we integrate y y to the power four, we will get y to the power five divided by pi. So we will get this equation, and when we simplify and substituting this value from rho, is now we are going to find out the moment of inertia about a tangent. In this In this figure, r represents the radius of this sphere, and this tangent. This is a tangent drawn, and we are going to find out the moment of inertia based on this tangent. Let I T be the moment of inertia about this tangent. So applying this parallel axis theorem, we can write I T equal to I C M plus M A square. Where I C M is equal to two by five M A square. Just now we learned the moment of inertia of this sphere based on the y y dash axis. That is equal to I C M. A is the distance between the axis y y dash and this tangent. That is equal to r. So we can write A equal to capital R. Substituting these two values in this equation. We can write I T equal to two by five m r square plus m r square. Adding these two terms, we will get moment of inertia about a tangent equal to seven by five m r.